So looking at the first one, we have two fifths plus three fifths. What did you get, Erin? I got five fifths. Which equals one whole. One whole. Yes. We're not talking in between. One or seven eighths plus one eighth. What did you get, Rachel? I got eight eighths. Eight eighths, which equals one whole. And Helica. So 5 twelfths plus 7 twelfths equals 12 twelfths, which equals one whole. You can look at this and tell right away that you're going to have something that equals a whole. How many of you, when you looked at it, said, oh, well, 2 plus 3 is 5, I, that's a whole? Yeah. <laughs> or 1 plus 7 plus 1, it's 8, which is my denominator, that's a whole. You can see that already. And that's going to help us with today's lesson. We're on 7 dash. All right, there are a couple properties of addition that we're going to be working with today, and they are the commutative property and the associative property. Raise your hand if you remember hearing those properties before. Good, because we started the year with those, so those should not be new. The commutative property and the associative, go ahead and underline those real quick, and let's talk about what they mean. The commutative property states when you order two when the order of two add-ins is changed, the sum is still the same. So it doesn't matter what order you add them in. If I do 4 plus 5, how much does 4 plus 5 equal? 9. If I change the order and do the 5 first, 5 times 4, I still have 9. nine. So the order you do, you're adding, doesn't matter. If I had seven digits that I was adding, if I was doing four plus two plus one plus six, you get the idea? Yeah. I could, it would still equal those same numbers added in a different order. So I can just go backwards, plus one, I'm gonna put the four in here just to be different, and then the two, okay? It's, they still equal the same number. How many of you knew that, that you can add the numbers, it doesn't matter which order? How many of you knew it was called commutative property? Right? Some of us know that, some of us don't. It's okay. All right. The associative property. It's very similar, except now we're referring to how you group them. Remember, parentheses are done first when you're doing math. So it doesn't matter which ones you group together first, it's still, this, it's still gonna come out with the same answer. So if I have five plus eight plus four, I can group the five, do this adding first, and then add the four. What am I gonna get? Go ahead and do the math real quick to do that. Five plus eight was 13, plus the four was 17. What if I do this side first? I have eight plus four. What is eight plus four, class? 12. 12. And now I'm going to do the plus 5. Mm -hmm. What does that equal? Did I get the same answer both ways? Yes. It doesn't matter what you do first. Now these properties apply to addition. They don't apply to all functions of math. So if we're doing divisions and multiplication, if we're division, sorry, not divisions. If we're doing division and multiplication and we're combining subtraction and addition in there, it's going to be different rules. But when you're talking about at straight up adding numbers, this works. That's why it's called the commutative property of addition and the associative property of addition. So when you're doing addition, these two rules work. These two properties. Okay. We're going to use the commutative and the associative property for our math today. The map shows four lighthouses in the Florida Keys, and their distance apart in miles. The Dry Tortugas Lighthouse is the furthest west, and the Alligator Reef Lighthouse is the furthest east. So you can see those, Dry Tortugas and Alligator Reef over here. What is the distance from the Dry Tortugas Lighthouse to the Alligator Reef Lighthouse traveling between the four lighthouses? So we're going to start at the dry tortugas and go to the alligator reef. So we're starting here, we're going to travel here, then we're going to go there, and we're going to go there. Okay. Do we know the distance?
from each of these lighthouses to the next? Look at the look at the map. Do we know the distance from each lighthouse to the next? Yes. yes, it tells us the distance. Okay, so we're going to be adding these fractions. From here to here, it's 70 and 5 tenths of a mile. From here to here, it's how much? 43, 43 and? 6 tenths of a mile. 6 tenths of a mile. I don't have everybody's participation. And from this lighthouse to this one, it is? 30. 34 and 5 tenths of a mile. There we go. Now, I have these numbers written down already, nice and big for you here. Look at how pretty my writing is. If I'm going to add these, I can add ones that are going to make me happy first. And by make me happy, I'm thinking once I start adding all these, then I have to start making them um, not be improper fractions and having a mixed number. But if I look at this, I have 5 tenths, 6 tenths, and 5 tenths. Can anybody tell me two that would go together nicely that I might want to add first? What do you think, Benny? The two that have the 5 tenths, correct? Why would that work best, Lydia? Very good. So the 5 tenths plus the 5 tenths will equal 10 tenths, which will equal one whole. So I'm going to put 70 and 5 tenths plus, I'm going to put this one next, 34 and 5 tenths, because this is the order I want them. And which property am I using right now? The What is it? Addition. It's not just addition. Which one of these two properties am I do? What did I just do? Commutative. Commutative. It's the one that it doesn't matter what order. I haven't grouped any yet. So right now it's just commutative. In fact, it tells you right here. Now I'm going to group the ones that I want to add together. And I want to add these first two. So I'm going to group them as my first addition. I'm going to let you go ahead and catch up to my writing as I'm writing. Let's add these together now. If I have 70, I'm going to put them this way because I don't want to forget anything. I'm going to add these. What is 5 tenths plus 10? 5 tenths? Class? Whole. 10 tenths. I'm going to put it like this first. It is a whole, but I'm going to put it like this first. I have 4 plus 0 is? Four, and 7 plus 3 is? Why do I have 104 here and 105 here? Who could explain that? Very good. So I changed this 10 tenths to one whole and made it 105. Now I'm going to add the 105 and the 43 and 6 tenths. Am I doing any more addition with fractions? No, the fraction part is done. There's no, nothing on this one to add. And then I have 105 plus 43, which is 148. Okay. Make it nice and easy. So the total is 148 and 6 tenths of a mile. Use the properties and mental math to solve. Show each step and name the property used. Okay. So I have... A one-third, a two, and a three, and two-thirds. There's two ways you could choose to do this. I'm looking at it the way it is, and I like two holes plus three holes and two-thirds. I don't want to change anything because it looks easy to me. If I have two whole pizzas, and then I'm going to get three, three whole pizzas and two-thirds more, now I have how many whole pizzas? What's two plus three? Five. five. So this is now five and two thirds. Now I can add, if I want to do it this way so that I don't lose track, or maybe I just want to do it mental math, but I have one third plus two third equals, what is it class? Okay, and then we have one hole plus five holes, which is six. So I have, 
one when I ask the question one hole plus five hole, it equals six holes, not seven. Okay, so make sure you're listening to my question. So now I have six holes plus three thirds, which is another hole. So I have a total of how many holes? Seven. Holes. Seven. So my answer is seven. Okay. I really didn't ch use any properties to change anything. However, I can choose to group the one and the, th I, well, you'd have to change the order first. You'd have to use the associative property to do one and a third plus three and two thirds plus two. That would be commutative. And then I can group these this way, which would be associative. I guess they kind of go together. So I can add these first, which is 1 plus 3, which is 4, and I know the 1 third plus 2 thirds is a whole, so I'd have 3, 4, 5 plus 2 equals 7. I could do it that way too. Which we have 3 and 4 tenths plus 5 and 2 tenths plus 6 tenths. We're going to change it to 5 and 2 tenths plus 3 and 4 tenths plus 6 tenths. Which property am I using to, wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, I get it. Which property did I use to make the change? Andy. No, I haven't regrouped them yet. They're still regrouped. I just changed the order, so that's the commutative one. Okay. Now I'm going to regroup them. So that's the associative. Okay, five tenths. What is three and four tenths? I want you guys to do this in your head, and I'm going to ask for an answer in a minute. What is three and four tenths plus six tenths? Raise your hand when you have an answer for me. Okay, class, what is it? Nine four holes. Four holes. You have three and four tenths, and six, if we do it this way, three and four tenths and six tenths, what is four tenths plus six tenths? I need everybody looking over here. Ten tenths. And then we have three. So three and ten tenths is really just four holes. Okay, so five and two tenths plus four. And now we don't have any fractions to add. We're just adding the holes, which five plus four is? Nine and two tenths. Let's do one more together. So we'll be using the properties in mental math to solve these. If I'm adding seven eighths and two eighths and one eighth, which two do I want to put together to make this the easiest? Raise your hand when you can tell me. Which two fractions do I want to combine to make this the easiest to work with? Rachel. Right, the 1 eighth plus the 7 eighths. So I'm going to do 2 and 7 eighths plus 1 and 1 eighth first, and then I'm going to do adding this part. Okay. Now, that 1 eighth, I mean the 1 eighth plus the 7 eighth equals how much did we say? How much does 1 eighth plus 7 eighth equal? One whole, because it's 8 eighths. These equal 8 eighths, which equals one whole. Now I can take the 2 here plus the 1 here, which is 3, plus this one, which is 4. And that's what I'm going to put here. 4 plus 3 and 2 eighths. Now all I'm adding is the whole numbers, which 4 plus 3 is? 7. 7 and the 2 eighths. All right, so number four, we have three six and three six here that equal what? Six oh. six. If I have three six plus three six, I have six six, which is a oh. whole. So I can, in my head, when I did this one in my head, I did three six plus three six is a whole, and I added it to this four. Does anybody know why I would add it to the four? Because then I'm counting by fives. Five, ten, fifteen. So in my head, I said I have fifteen, and then I still had this fraction here. So fifteen and five, six. 
So make sure when you're adding, I'm seeing too many people had done this. Too many people did 3, 6 plus 5, 6 plus 3, 6 is 11, 6, which works. But then you did 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 14, and this is the answer you're showing me. And I'm saying no. Why is this not a good answer? Who can tell me with the correct words why that's not a good answer? Ebony. It's an improper fraction over here. So then I'm forced to say, okay, well, this is really one whole plus five, six, and then I have to remember to bring the one over here to hit this is 15 and five, six. There's a lot more steps. Look for the easy. Three, six plus three, six is a whole.